We would like to boogie boogie. Boogie? No, it's not catchy enough. It's not a good here for singing. Oh, hi, hi, we're recording. Yeah, sorry, I don't see you there. It's, this is totally a multi people business. Welcome to my channel. This is yet another series. It's the Boogie Van series because it's never early enough to get spooky. Hopefully, you know, I space it out so it continues to like Halloween, November time, but here we go. The earliest episode of the Boogie Men series, that's Boogie Women. Today I'm covering two Boogie Women. Please let me know in the comments below which other ones you want me to cover because um, there's very limited sources. There's like about two lists online on like different Boogie Men in different countries. So, internationals, hit me up and I will cover the boogeyman of your country. The first boogeywoman I'm covering today is the infamous La Llorona. There have been movies made about this woman. This might be the most worldwide known boogeyman. Even though its origins are from Mexico and then it's spread kind of like in South America. But hey, now she's famous worldwide. Why is she famous? Because she's morbid as fuck, okay? So... The legend says that there was this woman in the village in Mexico named Maria. So she she was infamous in this village for her beauty, for her grace. And then this business nobleman came comes into town, you know, on his horse and everything. He meets Maria, immediately falls for her. He meets Maria, immediately falls over her. Guess what? They're married and they have children. That's how it works. We don't know his name, we don't know shit about his life, except for the next couple of lines. <laughs> With time now, when they have kids, the unknown subject in this story and Maria's husband, he keeps going out of town, starts being absent more and more. So, what's that all about? Well, she figures out what that's all about once he comes back from one of the business trips and he comes back with a young woman and he just like says farewell to Maria and the kids. Maria does not take a chill pill. She takes her kids to the nearby river, drowns them. She has the audacity to go back to this guy and be like, take me back. And um, by the way, I killed our kids, but still, take me back. Maybe, you know, you should have thought about the selling point of like children being alive. No, she hasn't read any relationship books. So, he tells her unless she manages to resuscitate or save these kids somehow, I don't know what he thought she was gonna do, he is not gonna go back to her. So what does Maria do? She goes to therapy, you know, moves on completely with her life and is uh, all healthy and sane. No, she starts stealing other people's kids and that's why she's famous today, okay? In this legend, she's famous for her very loud cries. It is said, if you hear like really loud wailings of a weeping woman, or La Llorona as she's called, like even if you hear them in the distance, she's actually a lot closer than you think she is. So because obviously she can't actually resuscitate this case and return them to the husband, she kills herself in that same river with her kids. And her spirit is still set to roam about that area, weeping, I miss hijos, which is like, oh, my children. So she's still weeping for her children, trying to like search for them in hell. And it is said, if you hear her, it's a sign of a deaf omen. Also, it is said like, if you hear a loud weeps, like loud cries saying, I miss hijos, even if they sound like they're distant, she might be closer than you think she is. Many parents in Latin America and Mexico in particular still use this to trick their own little children into behaving, you know, into not staying out on the streets too late because lawyer on is gonna get you. Now, the second story I bring you today is a story of Papa Yaga or Baba Robe. There are different versions of it in sort of Eastern Europe. So we are going from South America to Russia and my part of the world, which is like ex Yugoslavia. Baba Yaga became famous as a folklore tale as early as 1755. It is usually portrayed as an old woman with like chicken legs, so like really thin legs, almost caricature-like, and she has usually very ugly features. And in like back home in Serbia, she has a horn. 
So all of her extremities are kind of enunciated in this really ugly, perturbed way. She is usually depicted with these really thin chicken legs. It neither carries like a mop or a broom or pestle, and usually actually carries a bag. So it's kind of like a sack with, well, a body, uh, well, a corpse of a young child inside that she is about to eat. So the name varies country to country. Baba Yaga, initially Yaga is serpent. Baba is usually a woman. Back home it means an old woman, so like back home Baba is a grandma. In Serbia we say Baba Roga, which literally means the woman with a horn. In Polish it's Baba Jedza, which is like a witch old woman. And in Croatian it's Baba Jeza, which is like a horror woman. Um, usually due to her nose that's shaped as a horn, she pokes with it through the ceiling, looking for the kids that are misbehaving, and then takes them, brings them in her sack to the cave, and eats them. There are different variations where she pops up from, but it will always end in child's demise. They will almost always be kidnapped and eaten by Baba Yaga or Baba Roga. How gorgeous and beautiful it was, depending for those kids. So I guess the moral of these boogie women stories that we tell our kids is somebody's always watching. And then they grow up and they realize that is the truth. It might not be a person, but it is technology. Yep, start preparing those kids from early days, I guess. What other boogie men, women, children you want me to... Oh my god, are there boogie children out there? Okay, focus. What other boogie men, women, children you want me to cover? Uh, let me know in the comments. And if you like this series, leave a like to this video. And uh, yeah, that's it. I have nothing else to tell you because I don't have intros and outros for these. So, move on with your fucking day and uh, bye.